the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, why do we pray for the dead? First of all, because nothing changes with death except that the body is separated from the soul. The body dies, but the soul doesn't. And God is the God of the living, not of the dead, precisely because the people who die are still alive. He's God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not God of the dead, but God of the alive, which means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive. We pray for the living, and so we pray for the dead. Because Jesus said, whoever lives and believes in me will never see death forever. Well, he will never see death. And St. Paul says, nothing separates us from the love of Christ, neither life nor death. It is logical to believe also that God is illimited, whereas we are limited by time and place. Which means that whatever prayer we say, this prayer reaches God and reaches the persons whom we are praying for in spite of the barriers of time and place because God is illimited. So we can pray for our great grand great children who are not yet born. We can pray for the souls of our great grandfathers and mothers who died long time ago because their souls are alive and because nothing separates us from the love of Christ and from the love of our beloved ones, from our love for them and from their love for us. There was a dialogue sometime in the um, 18th century reported by uh, the Catholic answers of uh, attorney Carl Keating from California May I quote it without um, naming the people, the two persons um, uh, between whom the dialogue was, which says that the purgatory, the belief in purgatory is harmless. And it is actually logical, because the majority of people are not so good to enter heaven and are not so bad to go to hell. This is why in the Catholic and in the Orthodox Church we pray for the dead. But before that I forgot to mention a word, a logion of Christ himself reported in Matthew 12, 32 where Jesus says that blaspheming against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, not in this world and not in the world to come. Not in the world to come, which means, in the hereafter, which means that there is forgiveness of sins in the hereafter. In the second book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 46, a book which, to the best of my knowledge, is acknowledged not only by the Catholic Church, but also by the Orthodox Churches, but denied by most uh, Protestant uh, denominations, except some in Sweden, and so have I heard. Well, in this book it is said clearly that prayer for the dead is useful. Anyway, some people claim that it was the Catholic Church who invented the prayer for the death, for the dead. Well, this is not true because you have the prayer for the dead in the Coptic Orthodox Church where we had the schism, I mean the division 
already in 449 with Patriarch Dioscoros of Alexandria, 449. The prayer for the dead exists also in the Orthodox Syriac, Assyrian, and, uh, and Armenian churches. The split with them was in 451 during the Council of Chalcedon. So, again, it is claimed that it was Pope Gregory the Great, who was Pope from 590 to 604, who invented the prayer for the dead. Well, this is not true either, because Saint Monica, who lived in the 4th century, used to ask her son, the future Saint Augustine, to remember her soul, to remember her soul in his holy masses. In the catacombs, which date back to the first three centuries of Christianity, of Christendom, we find prayers for the dead, for the dead, sorry. In the Acts of Paul and Tecla, an apocryphal book from the second century, which means in the years 100 something, we find also the prayer for the dead. Dear brothers and sisters, we pray and nothing is useless, nothing is harmful in our prayer through the mercy of God and also thanks to our humble goodwill.